I know, I know, another omnibus review within the Batman family of books, but for anybody who is interested in finally diving in the Grant Morrison run of Batman, this video is for you. Cue the intro. What is happening folks? This is Alex and in this video I'll be taking a look at the newly released Batman by Grant Morrison Omnibus Volume 1. Without a doubt, Grant Morrison's seven year run on Batman was nothing short of epic given his iconic earlier works back in 1990 with Arkham Asylum and Gothic. This run from 2006 contains so many key moments that obviously has made an impact pre and post New 52. Before diving into the omnibus and how it compares to the previous collected editions, we first need to take a high level look at his entire run as it will give you all a good sense of what portion of his run this volume collects and what we can expect from the next releases. Just be warned, I'll be diving a bit into spoiler territory here but I'll definitely try not to give too much away. Morrison's run all begins not in a regular Batman title but actually in issues 30 and 47 of the weekly series 52. The issues feature Bruce Wayne dealing with his inner demons which is later referenced in the main run but definitely is not a proper prelude. You can find these issues if you have the 52 omnibus or the new trade paperbacks which are split across two volumes. Now the real start of the run begins with the Batman and Son 8 issue arc from Batman issue 655 which introduces Damian Wayne. This arc is then followed up with the Black Glove which was both collected in his oversized deluxe edition. Unfortunately this is now out of print so eBay would be your best bet. I also like to point out that the series was interrupted with the crossover of the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul in issues 670 and 671 midway through. These issues are written by Morrison unlike the minor interruption in Batman and Son with Ostrander doing the grotesque storyline. Now this is where it gets a bit confusing with Batman R.I.P. This storyline starts off with a three page prologue in the DC Universe 0 50 cent one shot then continues into issues 676 to 681. Following this is Final Crisis. The next issues 682 and 683 serve as significant tie-ins where knowledge of the major DC event is somewhat required. R.I.P. then finally completes with a jump back in time in issues 700 to 702. How this is currently collected would be the Batman R.I.P. and Time and the Batman hardcover slash trades while Final Crisis has an absolute edition and a trade paperback. Also expect the 10th anniversary omnibus to drop in late September this year which I can't wait to get my hands on. Following the events of Final Crisis and Battle for the Cow, we have Dick Grayson take the mantle of the bat and is paired with Damian Wayne who is now Robin in the newly titled Batman and Robin series. This 16 issue run is collected in an absolute format or the multi-volume trade paperbacks. While Morrison was writing the tail end for Batman and Robin, he had also been putting out a second series which was The Return of Bruce Wayne. This led to the Batman Return one shot which sets up Batman Incorporated. The Return of Bruce Wayne is collected in an oversized hardcover but can also be found as a trade paperback. Morrison's run ends with the series Batman Incorporated where Bruce recruits Batman all over the world. This series flowed nicely pre and post New 52 continuity and is definitely an excellent read especially if you have the Absolute Edition that contains the entire run. Now moving to the main event, this is the Batman by Grant Morrison Omnibus Volume 1. If you think you're the only one that finds this dust jacket design somewhat familiar, you are not alone. Credits in the book design go to Damien Ryland where he also worked on the Shadow of the Bat Trades and as you can see, he carried over this design trend into the Omnibus. Personally, I like this minimalistic clean and flat approach and I hope we get to see this consistency in the next volume. Under the dust jacket, we thankfully avoid the black cardboard which we hope to never see on an omnibus anytime soon. Not cool! In regards to the binding, flipping through the book from cover to cover, you can see there's absolutely no issue with it being tight. That's what she said. Which means a great reading experience due to no gutter loss. And what this first volume collects is the following. Extracts from issues 30 and 47 of the series 52. The Batman and Son arc from issues 655 to 666, skipping over Grotesque. The Black Glove. Morrison's chapters from the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul from issues 670 and 671. 
Batman R.I.P. which includes the prelude from the DC Universe Zero one-shot, and finally, last rights which were from issues 682 and 683. And now in regards to the extras, we get a forward from Mark Martz who was Grant Morrison's editor and a small but stunning variant cover gallery. My final thoughts on this book is that DC has perfectly timed the release of this omnibus given all the previously oversized hardcovers are out of print and the upcoming 10th anniversary omnibus for Final Crisis is dropping in September. So for most of you who have never read through Morrison's run, this is without a doubt the omnibus to pick up. Story-wise, it can be a bit tough to get through certain parts if you are not a fan of Morrison's later works, but I personally enjoy the complexity and depth the story brings along with Cubitt's and Tony S. Daniels' artwork. Now I turn this over to you, given what you have seen here, will you be picking up this omnibus? Sound off in the comments below. Again, many thanks for your support and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. This is Alex and I'll catch you in the next video.